I'm Doug Peltzman, and I'm an artist because I was a skateboarder first. I'm an artist because I never had a plan B, and I'm an artist because I really, really love to work hard. I don't give myself assignments. I mean, I think, and I mentioned this uh, before, but I think my work, the work feeds the work. I, I really think there's this idea that I use in the studio, which is to work. Um, and knowing and having, having faith in the process of going into the studio every day and working, knowing that things will be born out of that. You know, I do draw a lot. My background is in painting and drawing, and so I, that's a, a tool that I've always used. Um, a pen is always readily available, as well as a napkin, and drawing can happen anywhere. It can happen at a diner, it can happen, um, you know, anywhere. And so drawing is a great way for me to not only create new ideas, but edit without having to necessarily take that to the wheel. I feel like when I, when I work on the wheel or when I work in clay, there are ideas that are somewhat fully formed in two dimensions. Um, so it's not so much assignments, it's more about me just having um, a cumulative way of working over time that has afforded me the ability to sort of evolve um, and for my work to slowly kind of move forward. Throwing standing um, is great because you can, you can really use your body and kind of get into a rhythm with the work that you're making with the pot on the wheel. You can stand back, you can look at it without having to kind of um, arch your back in an awkward way or kind of move your head in a strange way um, that at the end of a, a day can really take its toll. So I really love that ability just to kind of be in rhythm. You know, one of the reasons that I love cups so much is that they are the gateway. Um, they are sort of like an entry point for maybe someone who isn't familiar with ceramics or isn't familiar with utilitarian ceramics to sort of um, engage an object in a way that they never had before. Um, and that can maybe lead to two other objects. The other thing that's not an idea that um, is mine in any way, but, uh, but a cup is, you know, there's not many things that you put to your lips. Um, and a cup is one of those things. So, uh, you know, for me, it's really, you know, really important to think about the cup, how it feels in the hand, how it feels when it touches your lips, all of those things and how they kind of coalesce um, into an object. So for me, you know, cups are important for a lot of reasons and a lot of reasons that I'm probably not mentioning right now, but those are a few of them. Now, one thing that um, I started doing in graduate school is I developed uh, a really a love for for a glaze which had these properties like um, similar to water. Um, I grew up on Long Island. I grew, grew up close to the beach in any one direction, um, 10 minutes from the Long Island Sound and about 10 minutes from um, the Atlantic Ocean. So water ha has had a pretty strong impact on um, the glazes that I use. As well as wood firing, uh, it hit home in my years wood firing more so for me um, in seeing how the position that you put something in the kiln uh, is a complete product of gravity and placement and all those things. So the gravitational movement of glaze is something that I really kind of took from that. Um, so that's why I use this glaze. It really, it's translucent like water. Uh, it's not opaque in any way. You can see right through it as if you're looking into a fish tank. To me, skateboarding and making pots are completely connected. I wouldn't be making pots if I hadn't skateboarded for well over a decade. The discipline, the style, the aesthetic, um, everything is intertwined. How you carried yourself on a skateboard was your style. How many times you fell and got up, well that was like, you know, um, building discipline, that was failure. And 
and, and, and the only thing that leads to success is a lot of failure. So um, there was a lot of that. So, and then picking like, and I didn't even realize this as a kid, but like picking out a skateboard deck, like you're making aesthetic decisions about a paint, like it's a painting, somebody designed that and you're making decisions. So all these things happened to me as a kid when I was skateboarding, you know, kind of by default, but really, um, really prepared me for a life of clay, of loading up a kiln, of, you know, a month's worth, worth of work and, and losing it, you know, potentially, and being able to deal with that loss and that failure, which can be crippling for some people. Um, but for me, uh, you know, it was just, and still is, it's like kind of all part of the deal. You know, for me, handles, um, it's like my favorite thing to do, I think, in the studio. Um, and I really see the handle as a compromise between the cup and your body and your hand. Like there's, there's the, the, you know, you have the, f the form of the cup and you have your fleshy, soft hand. It's like, how can you make a handle that works with the cup and also feels good in your hand? Um, and so I, you know, through this, I mean, it was through an exercise in school where I had, a, I had teachers, specifically Chris Staley, um, who really gave me the license to play um, and not worry too much about um, creating a, a physical product to show for myself like early on. So I did this exercise where I made lots and lots of teapot forms, all in terracotta, with the, with the idea that I knew that they would be tossaways, that I'd throw them away. They were, they were just an exercise in form and play. So I made, I don't know, maybe 50 teapot bodies or 100 or whatever it was. It was some absurd number. And I kept them all damp. And then I made spouts, I made handles, all of different crazy varieties, hand-built, thrown, pulled, everything. And I started slapping all those things together. And through that process, these handles were born. Texture and how things feel is really, you know, kind of the backbone of what I make. And a lot of it came actually out of like wood firing for many, many years and being really interested in like this crusty kind of Anagama fired um, surface and like how things melt and how I could manipulate glaze and how I can manipulate clay and, and, and get those two things to kind of meet. But it, it actually came from my grandfather uh, who loved everything I did and always invested his time in me. Like we spoke on the phone every day. He'd call me and he'd, you know, give me a Dougie, what's up? What are you doing? And, uh, you know, and it was always like, you know, this, this great relationship. So anyway, I gave him my pots and he would always use my work. And, you know, I give him the wood fired stuff. I remember many years and he'd like, he was blind. I mean, that's one thing I didn't mention. He was blind, so he'd pick at things and he'd, he'd touch everything and his fingertips were like this heightened sensitivity. And he was just so turned off by some of those pots that I gave him, just like how, how sharp they were and this and that. So, you know, when I started making, making cups and, 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 and really getting into utilitarian ceramics, I started to think about him and, and how he would respond to, you know, the fluted texture on a cup or the horizontal bands on a cup or even the inlaid line like his fingertips were so sensitive he, I mean, he could feel an inlaid line touch is really important but like my relationship with him has had a huge impact on